Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion, guys. And today we're going to be talking about this. Should you choose the 3.7 Q50 or the 3.0 T slash Red Sport Q50? Yes, guys, this is an updated video. So, guys, let's hit that intro. Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome everybody back to the channel. If you are a Boost in Motion subscriber, guys, please hit the like button. Please and thank you. If you are new to this channel, watch some of my other videos and some of these updated videos because we will be cooking with Grease all 2022 updating these videos. So let's just jump right into it. So this is going to be the second video of the compilation where we're talking about should you purchase a 3.7 Q50 or 3.0 T. Now, I've been in this community forever. I've had two Q50s, if you guys don't know. I had a 2015 Q50, and I had a 2018 Q50, and I had a 2017 Q60. And I've been in the Infinity world since Maxima. So I definitely know a lot of information, and I can be able to help you guys along, along with your automotive journey. All right? Guys, hit the like button right now. So anyways, this video is going to be mainly talking about which car will be better for power. Now, in the last video that hopefully you guys check it out on my channel, I talked about which car you should choose based on its reliability versus the amount of power you can gain, right? So quickly, I said that the VQ is the most reliable out of the mix. And if you want the most power, the 3.0T is out of the mix. But in this video, we're going to be talking about mainly, um, I would say, cost per horsepower or and or the amount of money that you spend in performance parts to give you a specific horsepower outcome. I don't know. I hopefully I don't confuse you guys. So let's jump into it. Um, let's start with the VQ. Now, anyone who knows right now and currently 2022, um, you can get a 3.7 Q50. Um, and for it to make a good amount of power, you have to add boost. All right. You can either go twin turbo, single turbo, mid turbo, or um, or rear mounted turbo. And or finally, you can go supercharged on this car, right? Now, mainly some of the consistent numbers you guys are going to see. You can check out some of my videos. I'm about to add on my channel with supercharged Q50s and 3.7s talked about their gains and how much power they make. So commonly, if you want to go supercharged on your VQ Q50, you're going to be making about 550 um, wheel horsepower to 600 wheel on 93. Now, you, for you to make this end goal power, though, you will have to go with um, a front mount intercooler, right? Soho Motorsports make a front mount intercooler. If you choose not to go with that front mount intercooler, you're going to make less power because the, the supercharged kit that most people know of from stealing only going to give you like 450 wheel horsepower because it just doesn't flow well and, it, and, it, and your boost temperature or your charger temperatures are going to just be too high. Sorry if I'm just getting all um, analytical with you guys. I just want you guys to know that. Now, um, you're going to be gaining right around that 550 to 600 wheel with front mount intercooler, which is pretty much an air to air system. And I mean, I've talked about in other videos on what you ne necessarily would need to do, but I just want you to know, get you guys to know that's pretty much the barrier of entry before you start really spending a lot more money on other parts to make more horsepower. But that's right around the threshold on what the VQ motor takes before the, the head may lift or you may spin a bearing. This is on a full stock motor VQ, right? Um, now, um, uh, now I will talk about kind of the cons because I already got it kind of gave you the cons already that you're running on that 600 wheel and then you might, you know, lift the head. Um, also, another con is because you are forced induction, you increase the amount of torque in your car. Now, the 2014 and 2015 a seven speed automatic in the Q50s aren't as um doesn't take as much torque as the 2016 and up, which I'll get into a little bit uh, in, in the next part of this video. But usually right around 450 pounds of torque for the seven speed automatic from the 2014 and 2015 Q50s, it will the transmission will start to slip. Unfortunately, in this platform, we don't have any transmission tunes for our seven speed automatic, so you're pretty much screwed. 
there unless you choose to build the transmission or swap over to a VR transmission from the 2016 and up 2016 and up Q50s. All right. This also applies for your G37 and 370 uh, cars or any car that uses a seven speed automatic from 2015 and older. All right. So that kind of lets you know the threshold about 50, 550 to 600 wheel on 93 or 91 fit fuel. Um, this is before you start deep, digging, dig, digging deeper into your pockets. Um, and also the transmissions right on that 450 wheel, anything up uh, pounds of torque, anything a little bit more than that is going to start slipping the transmission and you will have to upgrade the transmission. So that kind of lets you know, guys, where your threshold is. All right. Now, all in all invested there, you could be, be spending between um, brand new kits about from I think it was Top Guns kits, a couple of kits. You have sold kits, but you could from the cheapest of like seven, eight grand all the way up to about 12 grand. Just gives you a threshold because you have to get that Soho air to air kit um, from out in the cooler. If you don't get that, that could save you about two to three thousand dollars, but you're not going to get the delivery of power. You're only going to be making like 420 to 450 wheel horsepower, which they really ain't much power. All right. Now, let's go into the VR life. Right now, the one thing I will sit there and say is because I've had both cars is this. The VR30 is already born, is already built to be a turbocharged vehicle. So from factory, they designed it to handle boost. So things are going to be just upgraded and just more powerful. So in the VR world, um, the same seven speed or seven speed or transmission actually got beefed up. It has a larger torque converter and it just has better internals, so it can handle more torque. So um, commonly, the amount of horsepower you're going to make on 93 fuel stock turbos, stock turbos. Um, stock transmission, of course, stock engine on 93 fuel, it's going to be right around that 450 wheel horsepower territory, 420, 430, 440 wheel horsepower. Of course, with your bolt-ons, exhaust and stuff, the same thing kind of applies to the 3.7, but we're talking about VR lives here. So there's a couple things you got to upgrade, such as your heat exchanger, which I'll talk about in different separate videos, but, um, you got to talk about your heat exchanger, your downpipes, your cat back exhaust, and of course you're running on 93 fuel. All right. So that's going to yield you right around 450, 450 wheel horsepower and a close to 500 and something pounds of torque. And that's all day, every day. That's pretty much the, that's right around where the cap is on 93. Right now, that's not much money invested because you could spend between two to three thousand dollars to make 450 wheel horsepower. But compared to, let's say, the VQ life, when you just get a supercharger and you don't go air to air kit. You're spending like seven, eight grand just to make 450 wheels. So you already see that there's a huge price difference there uh, to make similar power. But you'll spend another 3,000 on the air to air kit, and you're getting almost 550 to 600 wheel on 93. Now, so for you to make similar 600 wheel on the, v, the VR, though, this is when you're going to have to make some couple of upgrades. You're going to have to go with upgraded turbos. Now, they make OEM turbos just with better turbines, which deliver more, pretty much more air. Not boost, but more air. They just flow a lot better. Now, if you choose to want to make that 600 wheel all day, every day, you're going to have to run, um, I hate to say it, you're going to start diving into your pockets. Um, Dick, I'm going to drop some companies' names here. The two companies that are still out right now are RT Turbos and you have Pure Turbos. But to make it simple and easy for you to make 600 wheel consistently all day, every day, you're going to have to go with a pure turbo. It's just because the way the turbines are designed to just deliver um, a lot more um, air, right? Um, also on top of that, because they are hybrid turbos, they don't spin as fast. So you do make a certain amount of torque, but a lot of the power and torque is later in the power band. Power band is pretty much from four, five, six thousand. A lot of the power is going to be really more down there. You still have quicker spool, quick spool, but not as quick spool as this OEM turbos. All right. And also because you want to make 600, 600 wheel, you're going to have to run E85. Now on VR30s, for you to run E85 at a high content, the stock injectors, um, not stock, um, the stock uh, high pressure fuel pump and a low pressure fuel pump would have to be upgraded. Now, the low pressure fuel pump could be upgraded for about two hundred dollars. It's not nothing crazy. I don't want to really want to break it down too much for you guys on this video because we're gonna make a separate video talking about the VR life. But <clears throat> excuse me, but what you um you have to look that's about two hundred dollars. But the high pressure fuel pump is about thirteen hundred dollars. Majority of them are about thirteen hundred dollars to start. So you kind of know where I'm headed at with this, right? 
And depending on how much E content you have, you may have to go to a bigger bore fuel pump, which could bring you up close to $2,000 for a fuel pump. This is quite expensive. Now, you can run um, E85 on stock injectors too, but there are aftermarket injectors, which cost about $1,000 for the pair of six too, so that they can flow properly and flow well. So you're just kind of adding the numbers up here. 2000 a thousand two hundred and this is top on top of whatever you spent on the pure turbos which could be about four to five grand so now for you to make 600 wheel on the vr life you're dropping four let's make it easy dropping let's say five yeah let's say five. let's just leave it at four for the pure turbos two for the high pressure fuel pump right um, another two hundred dollars just for the low pressure fuel pump, and if you want to do it right, inject is a thousand. So already you're pushing close to what the price of the supercharger will cost on a VQ Life. Now, it is a little temperamental in the VR Life because yes, you can go up your turbos, but the car is not going to be all day every day happy. And what I mean by that is the car wasn't meant to be driven at 600, 650 wheel every day, driven on E85 all day. There are going to be little pesky issues you run into. It, the car will turn key, will start, it will run. But every now and then you may have a couple of issues because you are going max effort for the pure turbos and pretty much for the platform and the fueling system. So, yes, there will be some bugs here. So just to compare the two now, now that you guys understand it. You can have a VQ motor pretty much going close to its max effort on a supercharged system or even a turbocharged system. But understand, right past that 550 to 600 wheel, you may spin a bearing. Um, um, yeah, you may spin a bearing or you may lift the head depending on what happens. Because at the end of the day, it can't go all day, every day like, like that. So that, that high compression motor wasn't built to take that amount of abuse from boost. And also the transmission. 450 pounds of torque, it will start slipping. But remember, you can upgrade the transmission uh, to a VR transmission, or you can build it, which, which could cost like four to six grand. But then the 400, the 600 wheel VR 30, well, you're gonna have to drop another seven, eight thousand dollars. That's just for turbos and fueling system, just to make that 600 wheel. But you can do it at four, four. You could, or you could just be at 450 wheel all day every day for like two grand. You know, so it's really up to you guys on what you want to choose to do. If you got to aim for a number, if you're aiming for a number for 600 wheel, honestly, understand that in both cars, you there's no way to cheap out on it. You're going to have to pick a route. And one route may have you building the motor and building and swapping out a trans. Another, excuse me, another route will have you changing out turbos. Um, change on turbos and fuel system, but it, the reliability just won't be as good as night running on 91 and 93. So there will be trade-offs. There will be different power deliveries and how it is. I mean, quickly, just to go through it, some of the fastest Infinities, they're still fighting each other. The VQ and VRs are still fighting each other in low 10s and even 9s. So the fastest Q50 is in 9s right now. Shout out to Daily Q50, a non-shop car, but he does have a built motor built trans, huge turbos. He doesn't have pure turbos. You have a, a bigger gather set of turbos. And yeah, his car is super fast. But if you look at any run-in-the-mill uh, VQs that are built with just rods and pistons, um, head studs, and they have a VR transmission, they're running higher trap speeds than um, higher trap speeds than his VR counterpart. And honestly, it seems like they could be done for a lot less too. So once again, there's trade-offs in here. And finally, what I would sit there and say is there is great amount of tuning in the Q50 life, um, the, v, uh, the VR30 life, and the same thing for the VQ life. But what I can see in outcomes is a little different. The VR30 life, you can get a really quick zero to 60 quarter mile car because it just built with the smaller turbos to spool it fast and be quick. The VQ can never launch as hard as uh, the VQ on, on boost can never launch as hard as the VR. But just because of displacement alone, just the 3.7, it's going to have way more top end power speed and higher trap speed, just let alone. So honestly, it's a good battle between the two. So to bring this video to a close, um, you guys can always ask, boo, boo. So if you have, you've done two VRs. I've never boosted a 3.7, but 
um, in your kind of unbiased or biased position, which one would you want for a certain power level? Which one would you choose? Well, I'm going to make it simple like this. Um, if I wanted 400 wheel horsepower, I'm going to make a separate video talking about this stuff. 400 wheel horsepower, honestly, it's easy to get that out of VR. You're not going to get that out of a VQ. VQ without boost is only making like 330. So it's easy to make a quicker car on the v, uh, VR for 400 wheel. 500, 450 to 500 wheel. Now we're talking where we're adding boost to a VQ, but you're dropping some change. You're dropping that six to eight to nine grand for a supercharger or maybe a rear mounted uh, a, a turbocharger, which could be about six to eight grand, right? And that will give you 450, 500 wheel all day, maybe even more. Now, if you're talking 600 wheel horsepower, now, the supercharger will definitely get you there. You have to drop some bread. You could run it on 93 without having a, a turn system in 85 and stuff. But now you're pushing close to the, where the, the head of the VQ may lift, where you might spin the bearing, right? Compared to the VR now, now you're, you're dropping change. Now you lost a little bit of that reliability, and now you're dropping, you're buying injectors, fuel pump, and turbos. Now you're really invested because you're dropping the motor and everything. Compared to a VQ, you just slap the supercharger on unless you, you know, unless you blow the motor, lift the head. So all in all, which one should you guys build? Um, I think if you're looking for a quick zero to 60 quarter mile car, you should get a VR, in my honest opinion, because it's just built to, for to do that. It's just already it's already packaged for boost. Right, there may be some drawbacks, but I recommend going that route. Now, if you know that you care more about higher uh, top end speed, like higher trap speeds and doing roll races, then I would actually recommend the VR, uh, the VQ. Reason being is there's no replacement for displacement. Um, just with a simple bolt-on supercharger with an air-to-air -air kit, you're making close 600 wheel, and the car will pull. It will do what it's got to do. But just understand that you're still close to that barrier of, hey, that transmission might start slipping, but there's an easy, effective cost of just changing out the transmission. Or you're super close to lifting the head where sometimes, honestly, if you guys really want to, you could just, you know, don't cheap out, but you could just change out the head studs. But even then, you're still getting close to where you may spin a bearing. Don't do that, all right? So if you're going to pull, pull apart a VQ motor, make just put the rods and pistons in at the same time. So all in all, if you care about top end speed with boost, VR, I mean VQ, if you care about a quick quarter mile times, go VR. That's my honest opinion. So outside of that, guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Hopefully this video was very helpful to you guys. Sorry for making it long-winded. Outside of that, guys, you already know what to do. Contact me at Boost Emotion on IG, Facebook, and Boost Emotion on gmail.com. Otherwise than that, guys, you have a good day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost Emotion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.